Hello everyone, my name is Arohi and welcome to my channel. So in my today's video, let's try to understand the paper of Yolo V9. Let's start with the problem statement. Training deep neural network can be tough. Traditionally, people thought that the problems like vanishing gradients and saturations were the main issues, but newer techniques like normalization and activation functions have helped a bit. Still, deep neural networks often take a long time to learn or don't learn well enough. This paper looks deeper into this why this happens by analyzing the concept of information bottleneck. Now what is information bottleneck? So it means a lot of information gets lost as data moves through the layers of deep learning network. Just like when you tell a story to a friend and by the time it gets to the third friend, uh, some details might get lost or changed. Okay. So the author think that the crucial information gets lost at early stages in deep networks, which makes it harder for them to learn properly. They tested this idea with different types of networks and found that simple neural networks tend to lose more important information in the deeper layers. On the other hand, more advanced networks like ResNet and CSPNet, um, they, they, they do a better job at keeping important information which help them learn better. Okay, so to tackle these problems, the paper proposes methods based on reversible networks. Now, what are reversible networks? Reversible architectures are type of neural network designed where the operation units are capable of converting their input back to their original form. This ensures that each layer of the network retains complete original information. So this was a problem statement and now let's discuss about this part, information bottleneck principle. So this principle suggests that during the transformation process in a neural network, there is a risk of losing important information. And you can see in this equation, equation one, this shows that as data moves through the consecutive layers of the network, the likelihood of information loss increases. So the equation they mentioned is a way to show the risk mathematically. It basically says that the more steps it takes in the neural network, the higher the chance that it might lose information. We will understand the equation in some time, but right now just understand that they're saying that the more steps it will take in a neural network, the higher the chance that it might lose information. Now, what are the consequences of information loss? So when the information is lost during the transformation process, the network ability to accurately predict target is compromised. This leads to unreliable gradients, which are important for operating the network during training. So what are gradients? Gradients are like directions that tell the network how to adjust its parameters like weights and biases to improve the prediction during training. And when network loses information, these gradients become unreliable. During training, the network learns by adjusting its parameter based on these gradients. And if the gradients are unreliable, the network won't know which way to adjust its parameter to get better at making predictions, right? So now we know what are the consequences if we lose the information. So to handle this problem, one solution was proposed and it was to increase the size of the neural network model by adding more parameters. With more parameters, the network can perform more complex operations on the data by allowing the model to perform more complex transformations. So it can potentially make up for the information loss during the earliest stages of the processing. However, just by making the model bigger doesn't necessarily solve the problem of unreliable gradients. Even with more parameters, if the information loss is significant, the gradients, which are crucial for guiding the model learning process, may still be unreliable. So instead of just making the neural network larger, which may not fully solve the problem, the approach here is to introduce the reversible function. If you apply a reversible function to some data, you can reverse the process and get back the original data. Even in deep networks, where there are many layers and the risk of information loss is higher, 
using reversible function ensures that the network can still retain enough information to make accurate predictions. So this is because the reversible nature of these functions allow the network to recover any lost information during the transformations. So by incorporating reversible functions into deep neural network, it become possible to reduce the problem of information loss and unreliable gradients. This offers a more effective solution compared to simply enlarging the model size. Now let us understand the equation used in information bottleneck principle. So the principle suggests that data which is denoted as X moves through the transformation in a neural network, there is a risk of losing information. The equation, this equation one. So the equation one shows this concept using the mutual information. So here what this equation means. This represents the mutual information between the original data X and itself, which is the maximum information available in the data. And then this represents the mutual information between the original data and the transformed data after passing through the first transformation function. And then over here, this represents the mutual information between the original data and the transformed data after passing through two consecutive transformation functions, which is F theta and G phi, where phi represents the parameter of second function. This explanation continues to predict that as the number of layers in the network increases, there is a higher likelihood of losing the original data due to these transformations. This is because deep layers may have difficulty retaining complete information about the original data. So overall here they are discussing about the information bottleneck and suggested a reversible function. Now let's talk about this part, this 3.2 reversible functions. When a function R has an inverse function V, we call it a reversible function. This means that if we apply R to some data X and then apply V to the result, we get back the original X. So mathematically it is represented as this, where this and this are parameters of R and V respectively. Now, reversible functions ensure that no information is lost during transformation. This is illustrated by this equation. So this equation shows that the mutual information between the data, original data X and the transformed data remains the same. Now the information is same. Now, now let's see what its impact on gradient reliability. So when the network transformation function consists of reversible function, it becomes easier to obtain the reliable gradients and reliable gradients are important for updating the model effectively during trainings, right? Many popular deep learning methods like the one described by this equation follows this reversible property. For example, in Preact ResNet, each layer repeatedly passes the original data X to subsequent layers in a straightforward manner. While this design helps deep neural network with over a thousand layers converge effectively. It overlooks a crucial aspect of why we use deep neural networks. In challenging tasks, finding simple mapping functions from data to target is difficult. And this limitation can explain why Preact ResNet might underperform in certain scenarios. And then techniques such as masked modeling are employed to tackle these tasks, to tackle these challenges. So this equation five represents a masked modeling approach where the original data X undergoes a transformation and then multiplied element wise by a dynamic mask, binary mask M. So the resulting data is then transformed by the inverse function aiming to retain essential information while using sparse features. But when applying these techniques to lightweight models, there can be defects there can be issues due to the model being underparameterized for handling large amount of raw data. This can lead to the loss of important information during the forward pass through the network. This discussion again extends to the concept of uh, information uh, bottleneck which we discussed earlier. 
So based on the analysis, they proposed a new training method for deep neural network that can generate reliable gradients for updating the models effectively while also being suitable for shallow and lightweight neural networks. And that new training method is programmable gradient information. Now let's talk about programmable gradient information. We can also call it PGI. So PGI consists of three main components, main branch, auxiliary reverse branch, and then multi-level auxiliary information. The main branch is the primary component used during the inference process. It does not require any additional inference cost. Okay. Now let's discuss this auxiliary reversible branch. This component is designed to address issues caused by the deepening of deep neural network. So when the network become deeper, they can suffer from an information bottleneck, meaning that the loss function may not generate reliable gradients. So the auxiliary reversible branch aims to reduce this problem. We will discuss each one of them in detail in some time. Okay, right now we are just knowing the basic overall task they do. So the next one is multi-level auxiliary information. This component target the problem of error accumulation caused by deep supervision. So what is error accumulation? So in deep learning, during each training epoch, small errors or noise can accumulate. And if you not manage it properly, they can cause the model to deviate from learning true patterns in the data, which can lead to less accurate predictions. So, multi-level auxiliary information helps manage and reduce the impact of error accumulation. Now, let's discuss in detail the task of auxiliary reversible branch. This paragraphs talk about adding a new part called the auxiliary reversible branch to the PGI framework. And PGI framework, PGI framework you can see the PGI framework in uh, this figure 3D. Okay. So in PGI, the auxiliary reversible branch is introduced to improve the reliability of gradients used to update the network parameters during training. This branch helps make the training process more reliable by giving extra information that links the input data to the target output. By providing this additional information, the model gains better guidance from the loss function, which helps prevent it from learning incorrect patterns or correlations based on incomplete or less relevant features. Simply we can say that this extra information assists the model in improving its learning and decision making capabilities. However, simply adding the main branch to the reversible architecture would significantly increase the computational cost during inference. So analysis of the architecture reveals that adding connections from deep to shallow layers lead to a substantial increase in inference time, sometimes doubling it, especially when the input data is repeatedly processing in high resolution computing layers. So in response to the problem of increased computational cost, a solution is proposed and the solution is the auxiliary reversible branch. So this auxiliary reversible branch is developed to provide additional support and functionality to the deep supervision branch with the aim of addressing the computational challenges while maintaining or improving the effectiveness of the overall architecture. So the auxiliary reverse branch ensures that the main branch receives dependable gradient information during training and the reliable gradient supplied by the auxiliary branch facilitate the parameter learning within the main branch. So by adjusting the network's parameter based on these gradients, the model can better extract correct and relevant information from the input data which improve its overall performance on the target task. Importantly, this approach is not limited to deep or complex networks only. Even in shallower networks where the flow of information may not encounter as significant bottlenecks or constraints compared to the deeper network, the auxiliary branch still holds value in enhancing the training process. Now let's uh, 
compare the traditional reversible architectures with the proposed method this auxiliary reversible branch okay. in traditional reversible architecture the main branch is typically required to retain complete original information throughout the training process this means that all the information processed by the network must be preserved which can lead to increased memory requirements and computational complexity however this approach may not be well suited for the shallower networks where retaining all original information might not be necessary or beneficial in contrast the proposed method does not mandate the main branch to preserve complete original information instead it employs auxiliary supervision mechanism and by doing so the main branch can still extract more relevant and useful features for the given task regardless of the network's depth and the benefits now what are the benefits of this proposed method over traditional um, over traditional reverse methods so the first one is by not requiring the main branch to retain complete original information the proposed method potentially reduces the computational burden associated with the memory storage and processing and the other benefit is the design of the proposed method ensures that it can be applied to network of any depths including the shallower one this flexibility allows for better adaptation to different network architectures and task and the third benefit is despite not preserving all original information the main branch still benefits from the auxiliary supervision mechanisms leading to more effective feature extraction this results in better performance on the task at hand as the main branch focuses on extracting the most relevant and useful features now let's talk about this multi level auxiliary information so the discussion of multi level auxiliary information begins by introducing the deep supervision architecture you can see in figure 3c so before discussing this multi level auxiliary information let's understand what deep supervision is so what is deep supervision so guys in a traditional neural network for object detection you might have a single output layer that predicts the presence and location of object in an image so instead of solely relying on the output of final layer for learning deep supervision involves additional supervision points at various intermediate layers of the network these intermediate layers capture different level of features in the input image and at each of these intermediate layers the network make predictions about the presence and location of the object these predictions are then compared with the ground truth labels and loss functions are computed to measure the error so deep supervision is a technique where instead of waiting for the final output of the neural network to evaluate how well it's learning we check in at various points during learning process these check in happen at different layers of the network not just at the end it's like giving the network more guidance and feedback along the way which can lead to better performance overall so by incorporating these intermediate supervision signals deep supervision aim to address issues such as vanishing gradients and the challenge of learning meaningful representation in a very deep networks so it provide additional gradient signals during training allowing for more effective and efficient optimization of the network's parameter so now we know what is deep supervision let's understand what is multi level auxiliary information